It's Gerald W. Brewster. Let's continue our um, last video. We, we did the railroad versus uh, the pipelines. And in that, I talked about, we were going to talk about um, ruptured pipelines. How do they blow up? What happens to them? Everybody's afraid a pipeline's going to blow up and it's going to be the end of the world. I want to say again, even if one blows up, if you had oil, there's going to be so much oil at late because of the controls they have. And I'm on the inside. They would come in with vacuum trucks, they call them. Like you see haul gasoline, they're like vacuum cleaners. They would suck up all the oil. They'd come in, dozer it up, pile it up, pile it off. And guess what? They plant grass, and your world's not going to come to an end, okay? But things do rupture. They have in the past. But I, I said that I think pipelines are about 150-year pipelines now. Well, why do you say that, Mr. Gerald? Because I've already tied in the pipelines that I know right now are about 100 years old. I tied in one in Northern California that was laid in 1925. The steel seemed a little different when I was welding it, tying it in, but it was fine, x-rayed fine, and it's still up there, almost 100 years old. That's before we have all the quality checks that we have now. The coatings are excellent, and everybody thinks a well blowout. You can have the same thing happen if the coating is not good. If there's a defect in the coating and it starts rusting over time, it can eat through that pipe and weaken it enough that you'll have a blowout. So the welding is not the only thing. But the coatings now are really good. The seams are really good. Uh, the quality of the welds and the seams. And I think, unless there's a false flag or somebody wanting to have an accident on purpose, that there are 150 year pipelines with proper maintenance. I said that uh, a lot of the pipelines I've worked on have had ruptures. And most of that was in an older pipe um, the first um, electrically welded pipe, the big pipe, it was a piece of plate that's rolled, and it still is today, and then it was electrically welded, uh, ERW, and it was uh, originally welded what they call low frequency welding, and that was a problem. That was the best of the day. Nobody did it on purpose, and later on they started finding out that the lines would rupture. The welds weren't as good a quality, and particularly at the end where the weld would come and, and, and fade out. And there was a company, they're out of business now at making pipe, uh, they're not the only one, but it was very common, A.O. Smith uh, pipe. And we would test these pipelines and do to one and a half times the pressure that it operates at. So if they operate at 600, just roughly say, we're gonna test it at nine. And it was not uncommon for the pipe to rupture, have a blowout somewhere. and. Uh, I've worked on several of those. Uh, but today, the welding is really good. The welds are inspected really good uh, at the factory. Uh, and they're pressure tested a lot of times, each door to pipe. And so when they get out in the field with the proper welding and the new rods we have and the inspection, when you're on a pipeline, you have inspectors at the very front end where the first pass is made. You have them uh, checking the weld when it's finished. You have them at each tie-in weld. Uh, there shouldn't be any of those problems. And in a minute, We'll talk a little more about blowouts.